This is not getting discussed on the mainstream media. Not only are they wrong legally, but the fact that they would do this is outrageous. This is an overreaction and really nonsense. How would you react if this was your son or your daughter? It's the offense of knowing the truth. It's the offense of having an alternate world view. Saying God bless you to someone is not a violation of the law. Welcome to the broadcast, everyone. We're coming to you from Washington, D.C. We're glad our television studio audience is with us. We'll be taking, of course, your phone calls. But I wanted to start this broadcast out by going over very quickly what's going on right now in the Middle East to give you an overview. Jordan, we've seen huge change in Iran, uh, where they're continuing now to threaten the uh, removal of Ahmadinejad, which will mean a more radical president if there is such a thing. But Iran's really controlling what's going on now in Egypt with the Muslim Brotherhood coming to power, with Hamas as part of the government, now with the Palestinian Authority, and with Hezbollah. Yeah, and something that didn't get a lot of attention the last few weeks is that the IAEA, uh, who is the UN body that oversees everything that has to do with nuclear power, uh, nuclear weapons, uh, they came out with a report, because Iran has been so hesitant to allow those investigators in, that said Iran absolutely has been developing the capabilities, these switches, uh, devices, and the only way you can use them is in a nuclear weapon. So we've now got an official intergovernmental organization, the top one, confirming Iran's nuclear ambitions. I've got a uh, portion of our export DVD that uh, actually deals with Iran and what Iran's doing. Let's take a quick look at this at the beginning of the broadcast here. How significant is the conflict with radical Islam. Radical Islam intends that all of us live under Sharia law. The enemy is radical Islam. If Iran gets nuclear weapons, Saudi Arabia will, Egypt will, Turkey, perhaps others. The moment the Iranians have nuclear weapons, they have a nuclear umbrella over their international terrorist capability. That is a formula uh, for insecurity. And I'm telling you, target number one is Israel. The Israelis cannot abide that. It is truly an existential threat. Peace can reign only when everybody comes under the umbrella of Islam. These 40,000 rockets and missiles on the border with Lebanon uh, could you know, be sprung and, and fired against, uh, against Israel. The more we have nuclear proliferation in the world, the more the risks are that there'll be a, a, there will be the availability of nuclear devices the lethality of which is mind-boggling. On every September 11, they fire rockets into Israel. Why? To commemorate 9-11. A proposal to build a mosque and Islamic cultural center near Ground Zero, generating a lot of heat at a hearing in New York City. Opponents want to give landmark status to the 150-year-old building, which would essentially prevent the mosque and center from being built. They don't want to just take this building and turn it into a mosque. They want a, a memorial. They want a monument. A monument, a tower of triumph. That's what they want to build, called Cordoba. Cordoba is, is the symbol of them conquering Christian land. <laughs> I mean, that was not by accident. They want America to be a Muslim nation. This is a march of Sharia through our institutions. And what they're trying to do is see how far they can get before there is pushback. And as long as there's not pushback, they'll keep pushing. If the mosque were allowed to go up and did go up, what symbol does that send? We might as well just throw the Constitution away. If we care about remaining the United States that I think we want to remain, we have to pay very close attention to this. The war on terror is a war that has to be won every day. Folks, I want to encourage you to stand in support of Israel. And that means we're not going to allow a divided Jerusalem. We're not going to see a return to the 67 borders. And we're not going to have negotiations with Hamas, which is what President Obama is talking about. We need to send a petition to the Israeli government letting them know that the president is not speaking for us. And also letting the president know we're not going to negotiate and have Israel negotiate with terrorists. And we're demanding a united Jerusalem. You sign on to this petition, I'm going to send you our export DVD, you just saw a portion of it, as well as a booklet on Sharia law. Everybody go to your phones, get educated, get informed, and take a stand for Israel. It says, I will bless those that bless thee, curse those that curse thee. Here's the number, 877-989-2255. That's one, 877-989-2255 to sign on to that petition and to get the export DVD. Of course, you can go to ACLJ.org as well, but again, 877-989-2255. Back with more in just a moment. 
President Obama siding with the Palestinian Authority, turning his back on Israel. Unbelievable. President Obama calling Israel an occupying force, demanding that Israel revert to the 1967 borders, a move that would divide Jerusalem. What's worse, President Obama, by backing the Palestinian Authority, is backing Hamas, a terrorist organization that vows to eliminate Israel. This is not a pathway to peace. It's an assault against Israel, our most important ally. We're sending a message to President Obama. This anti-Israel tactic is unacceptable. Stand with the ACLJ in support of the nation of Israel and in opposition to President Obama's troubling new policy against Israel. Add your name to our petition now and we'll send you two valuable resources, the Export DVD, a powerful look at the Middle East crisis, and a booklet on the growing threat of Sharia law. Tell President Obama it's time to stand with Israel. Call now, 1-877-989-2255 or online aclj.org. Welcome back to the broadcast, everyone. We're talking about the situation in Israel. Again, I want to encourage you to get our DVD called The Export. It's our gift to you as well as the booklet on Sharia law. We want you to be educated and informed on this. Iran is a big part of everything that's going on in the Middle East, including with Hamas being part of the Palestinian Authority. All of that is significant. All of that is in play right now. We also need you to sign on to a declaration, a petition in support of Israel, rejecting what President Obama said. Now, let, let's take a listen first to what President Obama said, and then I'm going to ask you to take a call to action, calling for a return to the 1967 borders. Take a listen. We believe the borders of Israel and Palestine should be based on the 1967 lines with mutually agreed swaps so that secure and recognized borders are established for both states. Let me tell you what that means, folks, and I know we got calls on this. You're talking about a return to the 67 borders? It's called an indefensible Israel and a divided Jerusalem. If you want to make sure that does not happen, I need you to sign on to this petition right now. The number is 877-989-2255. Now, that petition's going to Benjamin Netanyahu, going to the Israeli government, letting them know that we, the American people, are not adopting what President Obama has put forward, that we are, in fact, going to make sure that Israel uh, is secured borders, not the 67 borders. They don't negotiate with Hamas, and Jerusalem stays united. Again, 877-989-2255 or ACLJ.org, and I'm going to send you that DVD as well when you sign the petition, the export. Jordan, we got a lot of calls coming in. Yep, Don's calling from California on line one. Don, welcome to JSECO Live. Hi, Don. Hey, I, I just have a question um, about sure. the 1967 laws. Can you be a little more informative? Um, I, I don't sure. know too much about them. No, that's a, and it's a very good question because a lot of people are throwing around terms. Let me also say this. I encourage you to go to the website, ACLJ.org. We've got posted up there. Uh, our, we actually had our lawyers, uh, a couple of our senior lawyers are at our office in Jerusalem, fly over the 67 border areas. And we'll have some pictures of that up as well in the days ahead. But there's a report from uh, David uh, French, senior counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice. He met with David Benjamin, who runs the legal side of our Jerusalem office, as well as Rami Levy, the former ambassador from Israel, who uh, runs the governmental affairs side of our Israel office, and a number of other lawyers are there as well. So great commentary up. But you're in a good question about the 67 borders. Those borders, by the way, completely indefensible. But that is not a border. It's an armistice line. Yeah, I mean, what you have to remember is we're talking 1967. We mean pre-1967 six-day war, which is really more of a return to 1948 Israel, which is a small sliver of land, which is Israelis accepted, but they were then attacked. They were attacked in 1948. Jews were expelled uh, from all Muslim nations, over 800,000. Prime Minister Netanyahu has talked about that. Israel had to take them in. If you look at the 1948 map, we could flash that up now. It's, it's, I mean, at some point, it's only, it's only nine miles wide right. or less. 1967, what happens? There is a UN force on, on the border between the southern border between Israel and Egypt. At that time, Egypt had a very anti-Israel government. It was Nasser's government. Now, that UN force, a peacekeeping force, uh, kept the peace. The Nasser government, the Egyptian government, uh, told the UN to get out, and they started amassing troops on the border. Now, under international law, that is an act of aggression. That's an act of, of war leading to war. What does that trigger? The right to defend yourself. So Israel, when those U.N. troops were expelled against the wishes of the United Nations. Right. Which everybody were, forgets, by the way, that the U.N. troops were the ones expelled there. Right. Israel, in one day, catches the Egyptians off guard and destroys their entire air force. That then leads to Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and other Muslim countries sending in troops to attack Israel on all fronts. 
Well, they lost, and when they lost, Israelis marched into Jerusalem during the Six-Day War, and there was not a single Jordanian who at the time, they were the ones, there were no Palestinians, by the way, at that point. The Jordanians who oversaw that area had fled. They didn't even fight. There was no one shooting back. Right. They walked right in. That's the land they want back, the land that they weren't willing to die for. Now, listen to what President, uh, Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, said in the Oval Office to the President of the United States and the world about the 1967 borders not being on the table. We cannot go back to the 1967 lines because these, uh, these lines are indefensible, because they don't take into account certain changes that have taken place on the ground, demographic changes that have uh, taken place over the last 44 years. Here's the problem. We've got President Obama insisting that it goes back in that direction and insisting that the, uh, the Israelis negotiate with Hamas, which you can't do. They're calling for your destruction. It's in their charter. Now, Jordan talked about the 67 lines and the 48 lines, and we showed those on the screen of how the map would look differently. Let me put up the Hamas charter, which calls for the destruction of Israel. Take a look at this, especially our television audience. This tells you what's going on. It's calling for the destruction of Israel and the extermination of Jews everywhere. They call it the Zionist entity, by the way. And the President of the United States then uses the term occupier, describing Israel. Folks, this is the danger of what's going on. Again, let me urge you to go to your phones, sign on to that petition. We'll send you that DVD, the export. But you need to stand for Israel right now. 877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. We're going back to the phones. Gary's calling from Missouri on line three. Gary, welcome to J Secchio Live. Hi, Gary. I recommend that, by the way, the export. I got my copy Great. the other day and watched it. It's a real eye-opener uh, for anybody who wants to get it. By the way, the thing that worries me is the stand on Pakistan because of their weapons, uh, their atomic weapons and what have you. I wonder how that asymmetrically fits into this whole thing with the Arabs driving Pakistan to the right. Well, listen, this is a, this is a huge problem because what you've got, again, this is the Iranian influence. You said it right, Gary. It's asymmetrical warfare. It's not traditional warfare. It's not necessarily nation-states. But you've got Iran as a proxy, and they're trying to influence. We know they're trying to influence the West Bank and uh, Gaza. They've now done that successfully because they got Hamas as part of the government. They've done that with Hezbollah in Lebanon. They're now in control there. They are working in Pakistan inside the government. So you've got the, the Iranian influence, which we've talked about a lot on the broadcast, impacting everything and impacting the entire instability of the region is a lot of it's because of Pakistan. And the Muslim Brotherhood folks, watch out for them in Egypt. They will be controlling what goes on there, and they are Iran. Again, that influence, whether it's in Pakistan, whether it's uh, in the West Bank, it's the same influence. Yeah, and the Muslim Brotherhood is doing the same thing as this unity government in the Palestinian territories. What they're saying is, we're not going to be officially in charge, but we're going to support these independent candidates. Now, the Muslim Brotherhood has now said in Egypt, and it's all been confirmed throughout international news reports, that if they do have the majority in Egypt, if they are the leading coalition partner in the next government, they will implement as much as possible full Sharia law. So that's what's happening uh, down in Egypt. In Pakistan, remember, we've got that office there with a whole team, a full office, a headquarters, everything, uh, a staff of about 10 people, 10 Pakistanis there, uh, working predominantly with the, the Christian minority there and the, the legal issues that they have. But remember, they have a, they're a nuclear power, and uh, they have nuclear weapons that al-Qaeda would love to get their hands on. So we have to balance that act of how far do we want to go in cutting Pakistan off and not having access Tough to know balance. where those nuclear weapons are? Over 100 nuclear warheads yeah. are in Pakistan. That's why you've got – this is a very difficult uh, tightrope for any administration to deal with, and that's why you've got to be very careful. This is, again, asymmetrical. It's different. Let's try to get another call in here. Nancy's calling from New York on line four. Nancy, welcome to Jay Secchio Live. Hi, Nancy. Hello, Jay. I, the United States has never been asked to return territory like New Mexico or Texas when we right. won fair and square in a war. Why would we ask that of Israel? Because the rules are different when it's Israel. Could you imagine we could solve the problems that we have on our border with Mexico, Mr. President of the United States? We'll just return to the 1845 borders of the United States. Texas is now part of uh, Mexico. Uh, we could cede California, too, I guess, and that'll solve the border problem there. Of course not. Uh, this is the reality of what we're dealing with. There is a distortion factor when Israel's involved. All the rules change. Are we going to sit down with al-Qaeda? Listen again. Prince, uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu talking about negotiating with Hamas is like the United States negotiating with al-Qaeda. Now, he's really specific on this. Take a listen. Well, Israel obviously cannot be asked to negotiate with a government that is backed by the Palestinian version of al-Qaeda. 
We wouldn't do that. So why are we asking Israel to? Because the rules are different, and the president has put the administration, uh, the Israeli administration, in a dilemma. Now, I've got a team in Israel right now as we're uh, filming this for our television audience. Uh, we've, been, we've been working here in Washington with members of Senate and Congress. The resolution that's being adopted by the Senate that's going to basically disavow what the president has said but you again folks speak out on this issue jordan's going to give you that number right now sign that petition we'll send you that export dvd get educated stand with israel no divided jerusalem here call right now 877-989-2255 that's 877-989-2255 why is it important uh this doesn't just end with the speeches that were given in the united states by President Obama or Prime Minister Netanyahu from Israel. It's all leading up to the fall at the United Nations meeting of the General Assembly right right here in the United States in New York when the Palestinians are going to push for recognition of statehood. At this point, our president has not yet committed to vetoing a Palestinian state at the Security Council. And even if we do veto it, Palestinians can still be recognized as a state by the General Assembly. So you need to call right now and stand with Israel. This issue is really just starting. Yeah, folks, again, let me follow up on something Jordan just said, talk about signing that petition. I also want to give you this export DVD. Do you know this is a full-end feature film that we shot at the ACLJ? We've distributed so far 140,000 copies of this movie. Uh, It was shot on location in Israel, shot in Washington, shot in New York. It gives you the full uh, panorama of what's going on in the Middle East. I want you to have it. We want you to sign that petition in support of Israel. Again, that number is 877-989-2255. That's one. 877-989-2255. 877-989-2255. You sign on that petition supporting Israel, I'm going to send you that DVD, the export. Our team's engaged around the globe on this issue. Again, 877-989-2255 or ACLJ.org. President Obama siding with the Palestinian Authority, turning his back on Israel. Unbelievable. President Obama calling Israel an occupying force, demanding that Israel revert to the 1967 borders, a move that would divide Jerusalem. What's worse, President Obama, by backing the Palestinian Authority, is backing Hamas, a terrorist organization that vows to eliminate Israel. This is not a pathway to peace. It's an assault against Israel, our most important ally. We're sending a message to President Obama. This anti-Israel tactic is unacceptable. Stand with the ACLJ in support of the nation of Israel and in opposition to President Obama's troubling new policy against Israel. Add your name to our petition now and we'll send you two valuable resources, the Export DVD, a powerful look at the Middle East crisis, and a booklet on the growing threat of Sharia law. Tell President Obama it's time to stand with Israel. Call now. 1-877-989-2255 or online aclj.org. Welcome back to the broadcast, everyone. Let me play for you a very special DVD we have called The Export. This gives you a sense of the work we're doing in Jerusalem and around the globe. Take a look. How significant is the conflict with radical Islam? Radical Islam intends that all of us live under Sharia law. The enemy is radical Islam. If Iran gets nuclear weapons, Saudi Arabia will, Egypt will, Turkey, perhaps others. Five to 10 years, you could have a multipolar Uh, nuclear Middle East with half a dozen countries with nuclear weapons. That is a formula uh, for insecurity. Hey, welcome back to the Jordan Seculo Show and welcome to our ACLJ TV television uh, viewers as well. And my dad is joining us for the first time on the Jordan Seculo Show. Dad, thanks for being with us. I am honored to be here as your guest. You know, it was interesting. We've been talking about Israel a lot, of course, on on the radio shows and stuff. This congressman, this Democrat, right, Robert Andrews, New Jersey Democrat, so not coming from a moderate Democrat, not a blue dog Democrat. He's been, at, he's been in Congress since 1990. Uh, he f- first said that comment that President Obama was tilting towards Hamas. Uh, this is a pretty tough comment because it means that he's tilting towards a terrorist organization. Right. So the congressman was asked to reaffirm. He said, the, the media basically said, do you really mean what you said there? Was it misinterpreted? And here we have a, a long-term, uh, you know, he's been elected for 21 years, yeah. reaffirming his statement that our president is leaning towards Hamas. And the idea that the American people, uh, this is not an issue we can just shrug off and say, oh, we just disagree with President Obama, what do you expect? No, in fact, to the contrary, I think what you're going to see, Jordan, I think you're right, not just that congressman, but I'm holding that Senate resolution, a concurrent resolution. I think it's possible that it passes overwhelmingly with a supermajority, veto-proof, uh, uh, 
could be unanimous, saying that we're not going to see a return to the 67 borders or the 49 borders and that we're going to back Israel. It specifically mentions, interestingly, Prime Minister Netanyahu said that boundaries of peace cannot exist in the 67 borders. Uh, they are boundaries of repeated war. Uh, so I think you're right, and I think members of the Democratic Party, I'm glad to see it. I don't think this is a political issue as far as partisanship goes. Now, the politics of it are very dangerous, though. That president, you know, saying he's tilting towards Hamas is a big statement. But I think this is very, you know, people are saying, well, he's naive. He doesn't understand. No, no, no. This is very intentional. This is a desire on behalf of the administration to make a move towards the Arab Spring, as it's been called, which can end up being nothing but Iran moving its uh, chess players around the board, which is exactly what I think is going on here. And the president's playing into that very well. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it seems like to me, you know, President Obama, he took off right for the for Europe and uh, after botching some things with the Queen and some of the uh, protocol there, gave another speech, uh, reaffirming his statements again, which it's very important because the Europeans now, and there's been a lot of attention on this and the international focus, uh, for the first time are going to have a huge impact at the, at the United Nations, uh, more than just the, the, the UK and France who sit on the uh, Security Council. Now you've got uh, the, all of Europe. All of the EU states, the Council of Europe states, that's about 47 states when you put that together, will get a chance to vote on this resolution for, a, for or against a Palestinian state. Now, Israel's talking about this silent, uh, 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 this European yeah. uh, super uh, minority. They call it super minority because Israel will lose the General Assembly vote. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. You can't, Israel cannot win that vote. But if you get the, the most developed countries in the world, the Western European countries, the Eastern European countries, you've really won the vote. Well, that's exactly right because the economic uh, issues are, are cut off. The question will be legally, and you know this from your studies uh, at Georgetown, the question is if the United States exercises its authority under the in, as part of the P5, the Permanent Five in the Security Council, the question then is, uh, and they veto it, and they say, no, we're not going to recognize the Palestinian Authority as a state. Uh, what then, can they go directly for the General Assembly to a main vote, and do you have a, is it a supermajority or just a majority at that point? Yeah, it's, it's, well, what happens, is there's a kind of a twofold thing. So you have the Security Council under the law, under the U.N., charter the security council and of course it really comes down to the five permanent members who have the veto power have to approve a new country to become an official member of the united nations so if the u.s or france or the uk were to veto that move and russia or china could as well the other the other two permanent members of the security council i'm not sure they want to start uh recognizing these states either but one of them do then technically the Palestinian Authority or the Palestinian state would not be created under the U.N. Charter as a member state. Right. The General Assembly, by an up or down vote, if the Palestinians want it, they've never really asked for it before, can recognize by resolution a Palestinian state. And if they do that, it's up to other international bodies to determine what that means in their own internal policy. Yeah. So they can say... It does have the force of law when you're talking about the International Criminal Court. It does have the force of law when you're talking about the ILO, the Labor, labor Organization. Right. Because the reason I ask that is, uh, and for those that don't know this, uh, and I know a lot of people that are new to your broadcast because your broadcast has just recently been launched, we are handling, and you were there with me uh, in court at the International Criminal Court, uh, a situation where we're asserting on behalf of and support of uh, Israel's right to self-defense from the Gaza conflict. Now, the Palestinian Authority has asked for uh, jurisdiction uh, from the International Criminal Court over the actions in Gaza. We've been fighting that very aggressively. We filed literally thousands of pages of briefs. But it could all come down to a legal issue of, is the Palestinian Authority a state or are they not? But yet this state refuses to recognize Israel's right to exist. And wouldn't it be ironic if the United Nations, through an up or down vote in the General Assembly, acknowledges some kind of Palestinian state, while that Palestinian state does not recognize Israel's right to exist, which the Permanent Five did in 1947, as well as the entire General Assembly. Which is so would that be something yeah, else? Which is in itself a violation of the UN Charter, which says you must recognize each other and, and you want peaceful yeah. settlements of, dis, of uh, disputes so you don't lead to war. The rhetoric, of course, entirely different when you're talking about Hamas, the Palestinian Authority, now threatening the United States. You know, I, the kind of message I have to send to the Palestinians, and, and, and we've both been there, and, and we've traveled there, we've uh, we brought people to Palestinian territories. We brought them into the refugee camps, yep. what they call refugee camps. We've done food distribution in the Palestinian territories. And people can see those photos on ACLJ.org of you and me and, 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 and mom and everyone giving out food to, to Muslim Palestinians at, from an organization uh, we work with there. 
at the same time, their government officials, they didn't have to make this decision to go into agreement with Hamas. They, it, so people are trying to think, oh, they were forced to do it. We were paying, giving them money so that they had enough security in the West Bank to protect themselves from a Hamas takeover. Yeah, now they're kind of walking into it. And at the same time, you got the President of the United States uh, unfortunately, calling for uh, basically and without apology uh, negotiations with Hamas, which will end up in a 67 border situation, which means a divided Jerusalem, which we're asking people to speak out against uh, through this petition that so far has been very successful, including resolutions at the Senate. And that's what I was going to ask you about. We don't usually do the petitions a lot on the Jordan Secular Show, but this week we have been yeah. because this is key. The support of Israel and a united Jerusalem, it matters to everybody because I know the listeners right now, if they've never been to Israel, they all want to go one day. Every single person. You know, I talked to members of Congress that have been, they all want to go back if, if and uh, bring more people and their families who want to see the holy sites. If Israel, if Jerusalem does not remain united, uh, you you're may not, not have an opportunity to see those holy sites in a place where you're going to feel safe. See, in the 1950s and the 1960s, how many people were going to Israel into the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall, as it's called, uh, up to the Temple Mount, over to the uh, uh, the Calvary. I mean, you look at all of these. Uh, you, you you talk about the site of the, the crucifixion. Those would be in Hamas control. Calvary would be in the control of Hamas. The Garden Tomb, you're not going to get access to any of this. They're going to close it off quicker than you can blink. And that's why you got to really stand forward here. And, Jordan, I'm glad you're encouraging people on your broadcast to do just that. And one of the interesting things we noticed as we're wrapping up the program uh, today, folks, is that if you have visited the Temple Mount, if you've ever been to where the Dome of the Rock is, uh, Israelis really let the Muslims control it and, and let this uh, the Temple Fund, which is controlled by the Saudis, actually, they control the access to it. The Muslims are the only ones allowed into the Dome of the Rock now that used to be different before. So Israelis have allowed the Muslim community really to control one of their holy sites but opened up the other holy sites to the world's other two major relig religions, Christianity and Judaism. Join this petition. If you ever want to visit Israel and a united Jerusalem, you should be joining it right now. Call our toll-free number, 877 989-2255 that's 877-989-2255 or aclj.org President Obama siding with the Palestinian Authority, turning his back on Israel. Unbelievable. President Obama calling Israel an occupying force, demanding that Israel revert to the 1967 borders, a move that would divide Jerusalem. What's worse, President Obama, by backing the Palestinian Authority, is backing Hamas, a terrorist organization that vows to eliminate Israel. This is not a pathway to peace. It's an assault against Israel, our most important ally. We're sending a message to President Obama. This anti-Israel tactic is unacceptable. Stand with the ACLJ in support of the nation of Israel and in opposition to President Obama's troubling new policy against Israel. Add your name to our petition now and we'll send you two valuable resources, the Export DVD, a powerful look at the Middle East crisis, and a booklet on the growing threat of Sharia law. Tell President Obama it's time to stand with Israel. Call now, 1-877-989-2255 or online, aclj.org. 